Wow, thank you all for, for coming out. I'm Brenda Mosby, and I'm the owner and the operator of Mosby Services. One of the services that we offer is assistance to people with disabilities for employment. I also am a very proud co-chair of the CCDC board with my cohort, um, <laughs> Lloyd Lewis. I almost forgot you, Lloyd. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> While we honor the amazing people that are part of our community, I hope that you will really enjoy this art created by people with disabilities. At CCDC, we believe everyone has a gift. And our society loses if we cannot share our gifts to the world. Those who have the gift to produce art, whether visual art, performance art, music, tactile, written, or immersive art, we all, we all are benefited by the, the art world. This belief about us all is why we all work hard. CCDC and the board, we work hard to make sure there are the right laws in place. And why we enforce the laws when they are ignored. This belief is why we make sure that benefits we need do not preclude employment. Very important, very important to our community. We work to make sure that people with disabilities have the same opportunities to live, work, play, and love yes. as others. The Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, is 32 years old. <laughs> It was never created to create perfection, but to eliminate the exclusion and isolation that can be so crushing to people with disabilities and give us an opportunity to experience the same. Sorrow, joy, fear, and hope and give us an opportunity to try. Now, this is not by accident, CCDC is 32 years old. We were founded to make sure that the ADA became reality in Colorado. Our motto is actually an experiment. The experiment was could an organization be run by people with all types of disabilities and succeed and make changes that will help all of us. This was a departure from the tradition of each separate disability group having their own organization and many disability organizations being run by non-disabled people that provide services. CCDC is run by disabled people and we facilitate opportunities to use our gifts to be involved with social change. We believe 
those of us with different disabilities have more in common than not. And we seek to be that bridge in our community, working with many great organizations that represent single disability types. Our organizational experiment is successful. But we still have work to do. You know, we spend most of our time pointing out what doesn't work. So we are so happy tonight to celebrate and point out what is working. <laughs> and honor those who make it happen. At the end, my colleague Ashley, our board secretary, will talk about how you can help continue this work. On behalf of the board, we welcome you and thank you. Lloyd Lewis is going to um, introduce our first award recipient, but first I want to tell you briefly about the people it's named after, um, because there are very few people here that knew them. Um, George, thank you. George Roberts and, and Jeanette Klimak were two people, they, they fell in love. George was raised in an institution, Jeanette was raised as a person with, they both had developmental disabilities, was, was raised in a home, but both of them did not have the benefit of any kind of education. They um, were screwed by every system that existed, um, often repeatedly, but despite that, they never stopped being activists and giving for the community and making the world better. They would sit um, for hours in hearings, even though um, particularly George couldn't read or write because no one ever bothered to teach him. But if, if the community needed people to be at the Capitol, they would be at the Capitol. George was very proud of his arrest record. Um, he, um, I think, lost counted about 38 arrests. Um, and, and again, they were, they were really amazing people. And often what happens is we don't honor the foot soldiers of our movement. And George and Jeanette were true foot soldiers. Uh, one funny story about George is, we, um, you know, people I think often thought they didn't understand what was going on just because they couldn't read or write. Well, we were in a hearing at the Capitol, and it was, I don't remember what the issue was, but it was one of the many things where we were going up against, you know, certain lobbyists um, um, on, uh, on provider issues. And there were, you know, people in suits testifying and talking about what does and doesn't happen. And George just lost it and screamed out at the top of his lungs, liars! <laughs> And of course, you know that you don't do that at the Capitol. But but he, it was so it was so genuine and so real that no one really um, said anything, and it really kind of took the wind out of out of those sails. It was it was beautiful, and there are many, many fun stories. Um, but um, what we we're here today to honor, um, as they would have wanted, the foot soldiers that are carrying on today. So Lloyd is going to introduce this first award. Thank you, Julie. It is such an honor to be here tonight. So many friends, so many amazing people doing such powerful and amazing work. Let's have another big round of applause for Julie and Brenda. They are amazing. <laughs> uh, and I'm so inspired to be here, as I said. And it just hit me, you know, I want to do a kick it off with a little gift to CCDC. So I want to donate $2,000 for you to purchase some of this wonderful art for the office. And another three thousand dollars to support the work. So, so I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. I'm Lloyd Lewis. I'm the CEO of the Art Thrift Stores. And right after the evening, a bus is going to roll up, and we're all going to go to our South Broadway store. <laughs> and you know, bring your credit cards and fill your cards. Uh, I am fortunate to have been a chair, a co-chair of this wonderful board for the past decade. And you know, I am a very, very proud father of a wonderful young man who is turning 19 uh, next month. My son Kennedy, who has Down syndrome, and he has been a blessing in my life and an inspiration for me in my career. I uh, am honored to present the Foot Soldier of the Year Award to Joanne Rusha. Let's give her a round of applause. Julie, 
talked about George Roberts and Jeanette Klim Klimak, for whom this award was named. Their desire to give and make the world a better place is also typical of our 400 employees at ARC who have disabilities, and they inspire us every day at my company. And what every company or community needs are people just like Julie, just like Brenda, just like all of you, making the world a better place. Joanne is one of those people. She is one of those people. She has dedicated many, many hours to CCDC as a volunteer lobbyist over the years. Uh, and many other, many other contributions to CCDC, but her volunteer lobbying truly stands out. We have an amazing team of volunteer lobbyists. It's the team that makes things work and the personal stories on our issues that they share that move our legislators. Before Joanne, we never had a professional lobbyist. We never had the resources. We never really had the interest. We have a strong belief that disabled people must speak for ourselves, and we didn't want to rely on non-disabled professionals to speak for us. What we got with Joanne is very special. She is a professional lobbyist, and she's also a person with a disability. She's also a person with a disability. She's volunteered her time for us, which has greatly helped our budget, and her knowledge of people and processes has been invaluable, along with her incredible research skills. She's worked relentlessly on our issues. Her work is not just during the session, but before and after. In 2020, she stewarded a great transit bill that would have brought accountability to RTD and had the world not imploded with COVID, with bipartisan support, it may well have passed. Last year, she worked hard to help push through our groundbreaking bill, putting the ADA into state law. ADA is now Colorado law. ADA is now Colorado law. This year, she's helped a great deal on our wheelchair bills and took on a complicated transportation bill. Uh, she's a special person. She doesn't need to be the superstar. She always consults with all people who are affected, works to get a wide variety of voices and testimony, shows up to our strategy calls every Sunday night, beginning in November when the budget comes out and ending in May uh, when the session begins. <laughs> As board chair of CCDC, I know about her work ethic and determination, and I also experienced it firsthand. We have hired her to run Mark Thrift's government relations, and she's doing a great job. And in the hiring process, she and Julie made it clear that volunteering with CCDC would be an imperative. <laughs> and when Julie makes something clear, she makes it clear. To us. <laughs> so as someone who's very familiar with Joanne's passion, dedication, and advocacy skills, I am honored to present the Foot Soldier of the Year Award to Joanne Ruscha. Give her a round of applause. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I mistakenly assumed there was going to be a podium. And uh, if you don't mind, Lloyd, I could use your, yeah, if you could just. This is something I can do. I'm going to hold this. Uh, and then I have, yeah, and then if you could just, yeah, oh, so. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay. This That's is how it works in the company, too. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate you always having my back and my mic. Um, so I thank you, Lloyd, so much for those kind words. Um, and I also want to thank Julie, Julie, Hillary, Jewelry, there we go. <laughs> and, uh, Josh, Don, Kenny, and my family at CCDC, who honestly make all of these bills possible. Sometimes I have an idea, but it takes our team and it takes legislators like Representative Ortiz and Representative Brianna Titone who say, yeah, let's get this done. So I really want to acknowledge that every year any award is always a team award. And I'm just really, really, I'm going to cry, I'm <laughs> really proud um, uh, that I get to call you my, my friends and family. Um, I want to shout out, you know, my, my colleagues at ARC and to my wonderful son, uh, Judah. So I was 20 years old when I was first diagnosed with epilepsy. And my first inclination was actually to negotiate with the doctor and find a differential diagnosis. <laughs> because my biggest fear was worrying that I might not be as smart as I used to be. 
I was a child growing up who always tested well, was placed with advanced learners, scored in the 98th percentile, read chapter books by age six. I couldn't come to terms with the idea that I might have a disease that would, on occasion, render it difficult to speak or even navigate my way through my own neighborhood. Or as I discovered one summer, my neighbor's apartment complex, because I was suffering a temporal lobe seizure and went to the wrong door. <laughs> In my mind, other people could have epilepsy, but that just wasn't for me. That is ableist, right? It is ableist, and it hurts us internally when we think that way, and it hurts our community when we allow ourselves to think that way. Mm -hmm. Now, I was what I consider to be very left-wing, very progressive. I grew up in Iowa. Proud to say that Senator Tom Harkin was my senator, that major parts of the ADA were authored in my backyard where I grew up. But at the age of 20, I was devastated that I might have a disability that took away something that I thought gave me the most value. 15 years later, fully coming to terms with my disability and embracing disability pride, I started to volunteer and work with CCDC. But I will be honest. If I were to measure my productivity in raw units, the truth is I accomplish, air quote, more in the 10 months prior to COVID than the last two years. Because in March of 2020, I contracted COVID. And what was supposed to be a benign flu-like illness turned into something more sinister. At first, I would tweet about COVID or I would post on Facebook. I thought, this is like a PSA. Put on a mask, stay inside, this really sucks. <laughs> but after a while, I stopped talking because the COVID didn't go away. And I didn't want people to think poorly of me. Rain fog is a nice way of putting it. I would write notes to myself. I actually found a couple of them. Joanne, this is what you did today. This is what you did five minutes ago. Your son's birthday is in three days. Your son's birthday is in two days. Jude's birthday is tomorrow. Don't forget the cupcake. P.S. You are 35 years old. It is 2020. Judah is turning 16. Do not forget the cupcake. December 9. Today was Judah's birthday and we ate Chipotle. I would read memos that I wrote the year prior and go, oh, that was really smart of me to say. Old Joanne taught new Joanne things. I became so concerned with my cognitive state, I wouldn't even throw papers away. Not notes, not receipts, not on calendar. I thought I might have to devise some very complicated filing system for my garage in case I ever wanted to remember myself. That's how bad the short-term memory and the processing speed issues were. And it went on for once, months. So one day, I find myself in Lloyd's office. And I am tired from the fatigue. And at the time, Lloyd was my client, or was a client, and I didn't have the energy to make up an excuse for why I hadn't done what I was supposed to do since the last time we spoke. And so I just sort of told the truth. This COVID thing didn't really go away, and I really apologize, and that's not an excuse. True to Lloyd's nature, he started asking lots of questions. <laughs> And I shared with him not just symptoms, physical, cognitive, new allergies, but also my fears. This fear that what I thought I brought to the table 
some, some smarts, some savvy, or some good ideas, it's going to disappear. And I said, and I explained, like, look, sometimes I say things like cut the clothes. What I mean to say, please shut the blinds. And my purse has become a sling compartment carrier if I cannot remember the word for purse. I shared that my son had actually worried they might have to forego college in case his mother had early onset dementia. Now, if you are an independent contractor, you handle clients, it's probably, for most folks, not the best conversation to have. But I finally, I just, I just couldn't lie to the man. And who could lie to Lloyd, right? So I, I just let it all out. Don't anyone lie. <laughs> and Lloyd said to me, he said, oh, so what do you think is going to happen next? I said, well, the truth is, I don't know if I can support myself, because what if this gets worse? And I think my IQ has dropped significantly. Like, I'm not me. And I don't, I don't know if I'm, you know, like, I don't, I don't really know if I'm smart anymore. And do you know what Lloyd said to me? So what? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, in my mind, I was thinking, excuse me, sir. <laughs> and true to Lloyd's nature, he kept talking, so he didn't realize my internal processing. Um, and when I got around to listening to what he was saying again, he was explaining that it's not that my uh, symptoms weren't valid or that my experiences weren't valid, but rather being the smartest person in the room is not necessarily your best asset. Sometimes it's even to your detriment. And that we lose when we value people by raw productivity and their capacity to add to capital. It's surely, you know, not what ARC is about. And I knew that. And despite years of advocacy, of being a special education teacher, of um, working with individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, I still had something to learn about ableism. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about George and Jeanette, and Julie did that for me, <laughs> thank you. Um, when I first heard that I had won this award, I, had a bit of uh, imposter syndrome, and I wondered if I was truly deserving, right? Because George and Jeanette actually embody what it means to bring value to community. So um, <laughs> um, the idea that I would be um, acknowledged with an award named after people I consider to be heroes, <laughs> um, was almost too much for me. I didn't even know what to say. Julie finally figured out how to render me completely speechless. <laughs> but I promise you this, if the award was premature, you um, have my commitment that I will continue to do everything I can to ensure that every single person in and out of this community has a right to a life that is happy, healthy, free and dignified. Thank you so much. Good going, good going. We also have an award, um, it's called the David versus Goliath Award, and, um, and David, um, Representative David Ortiz, is going to introduce this award, and then, um, and, and this again was um, another first in the nation for Colorado. Thanks. So I get the special privilege to talk about the winner and this individual that has won this award. Um, when I first met her, she was running for office um, in 2018. She showed up at Senator Danielson's event. Um, I'd never seen her before, met her before. Um, but when I tell you she was scrappy, when I tell you that she wasn't afraid to talk to anybody, when I tell you that she was truly fearless, um, that would be an understatement. Because I think a lot of people did underestimate her because she was running in a tough district. A lot of people did write her off. Uh, but she went on to win in a tough district and to be the first transgender service elected 
ever to serve in the state legislature. Um, and I think that's one of the many reasons why she's been such an amazing ally when it comes to disability rights, and particularly a lot of the First in the Nation bills she helped us pass this year. It's because she knows what it's like to be overlooked. She knows what it's like to be marginalized, and she knows what it's like to be underestimated. Um, part of the reason why she is winning in this award is because we did do a lot of First in the Nation too, First in the Nation bills around right to repair. She was the one that was the hard charger for right to repair in general. She tried to run it the year before, um, didn't really get too many places, but what she did notice is when it came to the right for people living with a disability to repair their own devices, that's where she got a lot of traction. So she was willing to carve that out and work on that issue with and for us because she knew that's where she could gain ground. She knew that's, that's what, what, what the winner was. She approached me and said, hey, Rep. Ortiz, I've got a bill for you. Even though I am a representative that lives with a mobility disability, she brought me onto the bill. She is the one that led the charge on the bill. She is the one that organized the meetings and did a lot of the technical work. So for all those reasons and more, I am proud to announce that this year's winner of the David and Goliath Award is Representative Brianna Titone.